Hey guys, I'm Wanda. Welcome to the Deep South Kitchen. Today I'm going to be canning chicken wings, it says. But it actually it is parts of the wing, the little drumette parts of the wing. And some of it is the little pieces, the, the other part, both pieces. But a lot of it is the drumettes. And Danny likes the drumettes. I like wings anyway, and the flavor is so intense. We cooked some yesterday, and it is amazing. Now, I ordered these from Purdue Farms, and these are called, chi these are called chicken wing sections. Now, they don't look seasoned like this. They're just plain, but you can season them if you wanted to. The reason I got into ordering from Purdue is last year when they did the shutdowns, we didn't want to go into town all the time and I was running low of chicken. We, our meat birds were playing out and we couldn't get meat birds. We got our layers because we bought them in town as small bitties and they, didn't, they don't carry meat birds. And we couldn't order, so Danny and I decided, what do we do? I went to researching Purdue Farms, ships to your house, frozen. The chicken is frozen and it has dry ice packed in it and I've had really great success and the taste is phenomenal. They use no antibiotics, no uh, chemicals, no nothing with these chickens. They're raised on uh, all grain type, no animal byproducts used to feed them and things like that. So we like the chicken. You can get it organic, really great deal. They ran a sale, so Wanda ordered a good bit of chicken. We're gonna be canning some, we're gonna be freeze drying some and just eating some out of the freezer. We'll leave some in the freezer for use in the next few weeks. So how do you can chicken? First off, I took them and put them in this pot and I put water in them so that I can cook them simmer a little bit. I want to cook them just enough to heat them all the way through the bone through and everything so I'm not putting cold or frozen food in my jars. Danny and I prefer the wide mouth pint jars and you can put quite a few pieces around in here, add a little bit of broth once they're semi-cooked, and then cap it, and then you pressure it for an hour and a half. When you take them out, you have little chicken wings, the drumettes or the wing pieces to eat, and it's amazing. There's enough in here for two people. It's a great way to have a meal. You can also take and open it up, take the meat off the bones and use the broth and the meat in chicken and rice or anything else. So it has a lot of purposes by putting it in a jar. I put them in the pot, covered them with water and I'm gonna bring it up to a boil and let them boil just a few minutes to make sure and I'll take and test them with a fork, make sure that through and through they're not frozen anyway and we will be ready to put them in jars. The chicken has been boiling for a few minutes. And you can see this stuff here. I'm gonna skim that off. I do not want this kind of stuff in my jar, so I go ahead and skim that off before I stir it. And we're gonna kind of stir it and make sure that that's in the bottom and the middle, everything is cooked evenly for a few minutes. And then we'll be straining the broth, so we'll get a lot of this uh, extra you see the little pieces floating around. That will come out. We'll have a clearer broth when we strain it. And we'll be ready to jar these up in just a few minutes. We're going to let them cook just a little longer. All right, our canner is a Presto canner 16 quart, mm -hmm. I think. And I put three quarts of water over in it. And you always have to have that little thing in the bottom to keep your jars off the bottom of the canner. Don't ever sit your jars directly on the bottom of the canner. It's very important. And we've got that heating up. We've got the chicken legs, or not, we've got the chicken wings half done. They're not really totally done, but semi done. And I did some thighs the other day and took all the meat off the bone. So Danny's gonna be helping me today and he's gonna be jarring this up. We're going to put a half a teaspoon of salt in each jar. Now you want to make sure you use non-iodized salt. That is key. It leaves an off taste in your jars if you don't. The iodized does. Yeah. So. 
and we're going to make sure we get because so many people and and i'm one of them you'll you'll put your stuff in a jar and you'll go did i put salt in that jar or not you know i mean and i i'm an advocate of salt salt is a an extra means of preservation and i take every precaution it's not going to hurt anything so and we're not heating these jars today no. everything going in these jars are cleaned and they're dry and everything going in them is hot boiling hot yes it's going to be screaming so hot. we don't have to heat the jars you can if you want to if you uh, need to well, they've been they've been washed and sterilized yes okay guys we're going to take the meat that Ms. Wanda picked off the bone from the thighs first. I'm going to pick it up and drain the, the broth out of it actually so I know how much meat for sure is in each individual jar. Okay, as we put our chicken down in there, I like to kind of mash it down a little bit because I like to make sure I get as much in there as I can. Without overpacking. Yeah, you don't want to just cram it down in there. It's just a light, just a light pack. I think we're really about to get there, it looks like. And you want a little room for some broth because... Yeah, because that's what it's all about. The broth is where the taste comes from. You're making chicken and rice or something like that. But we have more broth with we the legs. We have a lot more broth. So we can add from the legs in a minute. I wouldn't bring it up too much further because the yeah, chicken will... the chicken will put out a little bit more because it's not all the way done. Okay, so let me set that back. It so already smells so good. We're not going quite up to the top. We're just what? Oh, uh, we're about three quarters of an inch from the top of it. Just in case, because with wide mouth jars, I don't want to pop the tops. There's enough yeah. meat and broth in there for what we need. And if you want to be sure and wipe that top really good, Ooh, the jar is nice and warm. You don't want to tighten them too tight. We've got the, the water over here heating on a medium heat right now so that the water's not cold as we put it in there. We're going to kind of mix up a little bit here. I mean, this is, this is a little bit of a challenging part to it, is keeping the drumettes standing. I like mine. I'm a, little, I'm a little OCD. I like for everything to be kind of, you know, standing up as much as possible in there. And you have to alternate the way that they're standing. One up, one down. And then we're going to be, in, we, you know, we're putting the wings in there with it. There we go. You got a whole space right here. I'm getting there. We're going to work our way around. There you go. I'm trying to uh, get as much in a jar as I can and not overdo it. A little space there. Can you lift that one and put it in there? I don't know. I think I think we've about trying not to. Uh... All right. So he's got these kind of standing up. Now you can take the little wing pieces. I'm gonna lay a couple of them crossways on the top up here. The little wings, you know, just to. And then. I think we'll finish filling the rest of it with broth. I don't want to really put any more in there than that. The broth is over here behind me, so I'm going to get this. Now, I'm not going to put too much because these, these uh, the wingettes still have a lot of skin on them. And there's going to be a lot of juice that's probably going to come out of them because we're going to process them for such a long period of time. And they're only half cooked. Yeah. So we don't want to overfill and have a pressure pop our tops. Right. So, one jar of thighs that's just meat and broth, and one jar of the the wings, and Danny's going to finish up. y'all it's raining outside that's one reason Danny's in here helping me can a little bit and we're trying to can up some chicken
We've got, we've got three jars of thighs and broth and five jars of the wing tips. We're going to be closing the lid. We've got it on high back here on the burner on high. This is a new electric stove and we really watch it until we get everything going. You do not put your weight on. This is a just a jiggler that goes on here. We won't put the weight on till this has been uh, showing steam for a few minutes and we know that it's not stopped up. And when we put this on, we wait on this to pop up, this to start jiggling before we start our canning time. The jiggler has started to jiggle and I just kind of try to keep it at this I don't turn it down much at a time just to keep it adjusted to a slow jiggle. I turn the timer on for an hour and 25 minutes because this is pints, an hour and 30 minutes for quart. And I'm just going to keep it at a slow jiggle. You don't want it to get too high or too much jiggling going on because it will push your water out and you don't want that. You want your water to stay in. You do not want your canner to dry out. I had some of the chicken left, the shredded thigh meat. I'm going to put it in the freezer on this freeze dry tray and let it freeze and then we'll fill the other side with something else or more chicken later. And when we get the trays full, we will be freeze drying chicken to see how we like freeze dried chicken. This went for an hour and 25 minutes. Then we turned it off. It's been cooling. The little pop-up thing here is down. You can test it. There's no steam coming out, so it's okay. If you hear steam, wait a little longer. Now, I always use pot holders because it's not because this is hot. It's not hot, but because of the steam that might be coming out. And I always open this side up because if you open it here, steam could come up in your face. And then I put it over the pot, let it drain a minute, and flip it, put it in the sink. Now I use tongs to take them out with. These are cannon tongs. This part fits a regular mouth jar. This part here fits a wide mouth jar. So we're going to put our jar top in this area, not here. That way you can hold on to it better here. And you see what I'm talking about? It fits better in that middle groove. And I always keep a pot holder so that I don't drip water everywhere. The first two were thigh meat, and this one is wings. All right, eight jars of chicken processed. And I'm going to show you how much water was left in the canner after an hour and a half. You can barely see the water in there. I'm going to say it's approximately one quart of water left. It takes three quarts to bring it up to my mark. So we're going to see just how much gets it back up to the mark inside my canner. I'm trying to see that line there. Yeah. Okay, so it took two quarts to fill it back up. So two quarts of water was lost in the canning process. And if you have your canner going too high, it will take all your water out. So in an hour and a half, you have to be really careful to keep your canner at a speed that it won't run all the water out the top in steam. We have 16 pints of chicken done today. With using wide mouse, you only use eight of the jars at a time, so we have 16 total. If you were using regular pint jars, you could do nine at a time, 
And if you use quart jars, you use seven at a time. So I'm really pleased with 16 jars of chicken done for future uses here at Deep South. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.